Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to make a player model what looks like this one because there's not many tutorials what show you how to rig it so you can pull it into your game well and just generally how to make a good character. So as you can see this is the actual monkey in Blender. As you can see the monkey's fully rigged in all of the places. For example it can even move in these directions here. Let's hop straight into the tutorial. First thing what you're going to want to do is open up Blender if you don't know where to get it. They have a website on it where there is a nice download button here. Or you can get it on Steam. So anyway when you load in what you're going to want to do is click general. Click A on your keyboard to select all and click delete. After that you're going to want to add in a nice simple cube. Go to the modifier panel. Add modifier and click subdivision surface. Put that to two. And as you can see, got a nice round circle. Click on this little drop down arrow and click apply. What you're going to want to do is control C, control V. And you should have two cubes. What you're going to want to do is disable this first one. And you shouldn't really see any difference because they're both in the same spot. Now duplicate this again. Click G and click Z. Move it up to somewhere like here. Scale in a little bit. In fact, I think I'm going to bring it down a little bit because I do think it was a bit too high. And now with this cube here, you're going to want to click S for scale and click Z. Stretch it out a little bit. I think something like that will be fine. G then Z to line up with the body. So I'm going to do it just like this. Also, don't worry about seeing these like faces because at the end we're going to do something like that. And when you add the texture, it will look way better. Anyway, carrying on, you want to click on this little Y face, click on this body here and click tab or go up to here and edit. Go into wireframe view up here, select the bottom vertices if you don't know how to go to vertices, click that button here. Click G and then Z. Move them up a little bit to create a little bit of a flat bottom. Then if you want you can scale them on the Z axis by doing S and Z again. And by the way, all of these move tools and stuff and scale, they are on the side, but there are quick keybinds for it. When going back into object mode and viewport display, you'll see it will look a lot better. But the side of the body is still too wide. So to fix that, you're going to want to click on it and do S and then Y. And you should see this yellow line here appear. And you're just going to want to scale in slightly like that. Now after doing that you're going to want to click on the face view in edit mode on the body. Go into the X view so you can see it from the side. Click E to extrude it and then you're just going to want to scale in a little bit like this. Now if you're wondering why I did that, well what it does from the side view you'll be able to tell this is more of the front because it is kind of extruded more. In fact I've just sprung it out a little bit more. It also makes your player more unique to everyone else's models. But what we're going to want to do now is make the arms. Click on the Y view again and show this cube. Select it, Control C, Control V and just deactivate it again. After that, with the cube you duplicated, move it up on the Z axis by doing G and Z. Of course, click in the move tool here. Move it somewhere like here, scale it down. You can do this by clicking S or clicking the scale button. And now click the scale button once more and click X and it will scale along this axis. Click G and X to move it this way. I recommend having it clipping into the body because it will make it easier for when you're rigging it. And the end here doesn't really look that good and not many tutorials show you how to make it look good. So what you're going to want to do is click tab or go into edit mode. Wireframe, select the vertice selection. Scale on the X a little bit just like that. G and then X and now when you go back into viewport shading it'll look a lot more like an arm. Also I feel like these edges here I've just selected them on both sides. I feel like they should come out a little bit so I'm going to click S and X and that will scale them along the X axis and now I feel like that's a lot more suitable because it gives it a little bit of boldness around the shoulders. Anyway carrying on with the arms what you're going to want to do now is duplicate this part here. So Control c Control v then click G and X to move it this way. And now I recommend you go into top-down view like this, click the Rotate tool and rotate it 180 degrees. An easy way of doing this is just spinning it a little bit. Go down to this Rotate tab down here and select 180. 
or negative 180 it doesn't really matter because it's still spinning directly halfway now what you're going to want to do is scale it in a little bit to make it look thinner because of course this is the lower arm then once more click scale but this time click x so you can stretch it out a little bit so it's still got the same length now you can see it's created a nice shape more of a realistic arm and next up we're going to make the actual fans so for this bit what you're going to want to do is find everything you've made adding a new cube go into edit mode and select face view go into top down view select these two faces here by clicking on one and then clicking shift go into top down view right click click extrude along norms i move them to two square things out to a vase or a normal square if you don't know how to grid lock it hold down control you should get something like this after that select these three faces here by rather dragging or shift clicking each one after that go back into top down view extrude them out again hold control to get that nice grid lock after that extrude out one more time to these squares and you should get a three by three grid now select these two faces here go back into top down view extrude them out to two of these squares do it again and finally do it once more now we're going to make the thumb so to do that you're going to select this face here go back into top down view click e to extrude and do two squares click G and then hold down control to move it up like that I then recommend you rotate it. you don't have to do this bit but some people prefer to do it and rotate it 45 degrees so here I'm going to change that to 45 then once again click E don't worry if it goes like this now we're going to rotate it so like 20 degrees so I went with 30 degrees now click G and just move it up something like that. I recommend scaling it down a little bit. And with a little bit of adjustments you should get something like that. So now you've got the blocky shape of it you're probably like I want the hand shape. Well don't worry because I'm going to show you how to do that. So you're going to want to select it go to add modifier and select subdivision surface. And as you can see now you've got a nice hand. What I would recommend doing is scaling these along the x-axis. Just a little bit in. Something like that. And then by grabbing these bits here. Click G and move them in a little bit. I want to see like half a grid. So I'm just going to move it in like that. And when I go back into viewport display. That looks more like a hand. So now what we're going to do is do what a lot of guides miss. And that's creating more of a 3D hand with a curve. Because as you can see in this photo, it has quite a curve to it towards the part. So what we're going to do before we add that curve is go into edit mode by of course going up here and selecting edit or clicking tab. Select this middle face and then scale it on the X axis just like this. And these faces should have barely any space in between them. And now the fingers kind of move into each other like a real hand. After that, select these two end faces here and then scale them in. So now we're going to want to scale down the ends of the fingers. So to do this, you're going to click scale and then hold down control and move them in something like three. And I've just done the same for the other hand. And as you can see, it goes to more of a point now. So now it's finally time to add the curve. So what I'm going to do is select the hand, control C, control V. And then with this second hand, I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees, just like that. Then holding down G, I'm just going to move it across like that. And now we have one hand for the left and one hand for the right. Now what you're going to want to do is select both your hands, go into edit mode, select these two faces here and these two faces here. Also select this little one in between. And because we selected both of these hands before we went into edit mode, we're also able to edit another object. Do the same here. So now we've got the unders and uppers of every hand selected. We're just going to go into the Y view and move it up a little bit. Not too much, probably something like that will do. And now you can see we've got more of a realistic hand where it goes in at the bottom. Now what we're going to do is create more of a bend in the fingers. 
So to do that, I recommend you go into the X view, go into wireframe, select these two bits of the fingers, rotate and do something like 15 degrees. Click G and move uh, just down a little bit. And I think something like that looks good. So we're going to do the same for the ends of the thumbs because that will be easy. And just like that, we got some very good monkey hands. Whoa, 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 stop what you're doing with your player model, because if you're enjoying this video so far, please hit the like or subscribe button, because it helps me out so, so, so much. But if you don't, then I'll throw this monitor at your head whilst you're sleeping. Anyway, straight back to the video. There is one final thing, though, and that's to select these bits here, extrude them, and then one hand at a time, scale them in a little bit. I'm going to do them by two. And now finally select these two bits and E one more time to create that. Pretty much what that does, it makes it easier for you to rig it later on because otherwise it will like mess up the bit here. So now with these hands, activate everything else and you'll notice that your hands are going to be giant. What you want to do is select both of them so the scale stays the exact same for both of them. Scale them in like that. Actually, the hand is a little bit too small, so I'm actually, I'm going to scale it back up. And now you should have something looking like that. So to create the other arm, I see a lot of tutorials using the mirror modifier, but if you use that, when you move them into Unity, the faces will invert. And um, that's a bit annoying to fix. I do know how to fix it, but it does take a couple of minutes. So instead, a better way of doing it is we're going to select both the arm joints Control c Control v rotate them 180 degrees, and just slide them across into the place. If you're not sure exactly where the other ones line up, go into wireframe view. Okay, so Blender may have just crashed. I'm so sorry guys, but Blender did crash, so I'm not going to go into wireframe view again, but I have quickly rushed another player model. Don't look at the hands though, because I haven't followed what I just told you guys because, you know, I didn't have time. So carrying on from what I said, what you only want to do is select these two hands, duplicate them, rotate them 180 degrees, just like that. Then what you're going to want to do is line them up as best you can. So I think something like that is probably good. In fact, I think it's like that. Yeah, that looks right. And of course, with your other hand, which is probably like up here, you're just going to want to rotate that so it faces the right way and then you're going to want to move it into place just like that. So now it's time to actually add the texture in. So before we do that, we're going to quickly select this part of the face, subdivide it, select these bits here. And then you're going to want to move them out. So for you guys, I think it'll be G and then Y. But because I've built mine wrong way around, it's wrong. In fact, to make it so it's still the same as how I was doing it before, I'll just rotate it like that. So, yep, it was moving it on the Y axis. And what you're going to want to do is just create a little bit coming out. So now on all of the parts of the body, you're going to want to apply the subdivision surface if you haven't already. For example, I've got quite a few on the arms, which I haven't done. After that, you're going to want to do this. So you're going to want to drag and select everything. Shift click the body so it's one glowing that like yellow color. And then click Control J and it will join. And you should have it rotating around the body like that. Now that you've done that, you're going to want to go up here into Textured View. Go down here to Textures. Click New here. Click this little yellow dot, select Image Texture. Click open and find your fur texture. So this is my fur texture. Don't worry about it being blurry or stretched. We're going to fix that. So first of all, to fix it being blurry, you're going to want to go to where it says linear here. If you can't see that, click this little drop down arrow. Change it from linear to closest and it will unblur. Go up to UV editing. Click A to select all the faces here. Click A here, right click, unwrap, and it should go like that. Then go to UV, unwrap, smart UV, unwrap, click OK, and you should see something like that. Also, I recommend going up here and turning on textured view so you can see how big the textures are. Because looking at this, I don't really want my fur texture being that big. 
so here i'm then going to scale it up don't worry about it going off it'll just like carry on the pattern and now as you can see i've got quite a nice fur texture and by the way once you finish here just go back to layout so for the stomach texture now you're going to want to select these faces here like that there should be actually for you guys let me try it and replicate it it should be something like that i think yeah so i'm pretty sure your one should look like that because how you've got the belly a little bit extruded also don't ask why my players so fat i forgot to scale it down when i rushed the model but anyway once you select these four faces click the little plus button here to make a new texture click assign and we should go white like that click new click here image texture open and now select your texture like that it's not really that clear with my texture but you can see it there and now for the face you're going to want to select these faces here click new texture again click assign new here image texture open and find your face as you can see mine's here and again if it's blurry just go from linear to closest and go to uv editing because it will probably be here unwrap it and it will probably be rotated on the side so you're just going to want to click r or go to a rotate tool hold down control to get a nice smooth rotate move it into the section like that so it's still a little bit rotated for me so i'm going to try and fix that i'm going to scale it a little bit and now i've got something what looks like that so back in the layout view i think that looks okay so now it's time to go on for the rigging so to start off click add and then find armature go down to this little running person go to viewport display and click in front from here move it down on the z axis by of course doing g and z all the way down to the bottom like that from here you're going to want to click g and you can hold down control or click z and you're going to want to move up to somewhere like that click e to extrude it i'm going to go somewhere like that and from here you're going to want to extrude it again by clicking a and go to where your bone meets but just before that like that otherwise it doesn't really look that good in game do that once more and again just try and get it on this point here instead of on the hand otherwise the hand's going to rotate weird in game now do the same for the other side so move it up like that then i'm going to extrude it again to this point here extrude it once more to there extrude it up to the neck like that and then once more like that on the hand you're going to want to extrude it to there then extrude it back to here up like that up like that and up like that one more time then for this bit you're just going to want to go like that also i know that you should probably have two bone joints here but having three makes it a lot easier for you to make a grip animation and again you just want to go like that now moving on to your other side you're going to want to click e to extrude it like that and then like that one time like that like that and like that extrude it to there 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 and there and of course do this for that finger there now what you're going to want to do is name these so this one's going to be my left shoulder this is my right shoulder so you're going to want to put an r in front at this joint here this little bone here you're going to want to name that r hand just like that at this hand here do l hand this bone here call it neck and finally this one here call it base so from here select these two little circles here e to extrude and extrude them like that now select these two balls here and pick e to extrude backwards now do alt p clear parent and just do that for all of these and now you should be able to move these ones freely so you're going to want to do g and then move them forward slightly like this it's kind of weird to explain what these do they're just something called like poles if that makes sense so your arm will bend correctly in game name this r pole and this one here r pole now your character should be fully rigged now you've done the bones hold down control and when clicking on your mesh click on your armature control p click with automatic weights and now your cube should have went under the armature 
Now if you click on the armature and go pose mode up here, when you move these joints here, you should see your hand move like that. So to export, you're going to want to go file, export, and then find FBX. And now you can just save it wherever you want. For example, I'll save it in my downloads as monkey. Now, if you guys did enjoy this video, please hit the like or subscribe button. It helps me out so, so, so much. And apart from that, have a brilliant rest of your day and goodbye.